Japan has always been ahead of the curve when it comes to robotics, but what they've unveiled recently isn't just another incremental improvement. It's a complete reimagining of what humanoid robots can be. While the rest of the world focuses on building machines that lift boxes and operate machinery, Japan is creating something far more profound. Robots that understand emotions, respond to human feelings, and interact with such natural fluidity that they challenge our very understanding of what separates human from machine. These aren't cold, calculating automatons designed purely for efficiency. These are robots built with synthetic skin that feels warm, facial expressions so nuanced they trigger genuine emotional responses, and AI sophisticated enough to remember your name, read your mood, and adjust their entire demeanor based on how you're feeling. The implications are staggering, and the technology is already here. Let's dive into the humanoid robots from Japan that are about to change everything we thought we knew about artificial intelligence and human connection. Why Japan dominates the emotional robot space. Before we explore the specific robots, we need to understand why Japan consistently leads in creating humanoids designed for emotional connection rather than industrial efficiency. The answer lies in decades of cultural preparation that Western countries simply don't have. In American and European science fiction, robots typically appear as threats think Terminator, The Matrix, or countless other narratives where artificial intelligence turns against humanity. But Japanese media has spent generations depicting robots as benevolent companions, helpful allies, and even beloved family members. From the iconic Astro Boy created in the 1950s to the beloved Doraemon, Japanese culture has normalized the idea of robots as emotionally complex beings, worthy of empathy, respect, and even affection. This cultural foundation translates directly into engineering philosophy. Japanese robotics companies don't just ask, what tasks can this machine perform? They fundamentally ask, how will humans feel when they interact with this robot? That question drives entirely different design decisions, prioritizing facial expressiveness over raw functionality, investing in soft synthetic materials that feel comforting rather than clinical, and programming social behaviors that feel natural rather than efficient. This emotional consideration isn't a marketing gimmick, it's the strategic advantage that's allowing Japan to define what the next generation of humanoid robots will look like worldwide. The Companion Robot Revolution Nadine's Emotional Intelligence One of the most profound developments in humanoid robotics isn't about strength or speed, it's about emotional awareness. Nadine, developed at the University of Geneva with hardware built by Japanese company Kokoro, represents the bleeding edge of companion robotics. Nadine is a robotic clone of Professor Nadia Magnanat Thalman and was designed specifically to serve as both secretary and companion for people with special needs, particularly the elderly and those requiring constant assistance. But Nadine's capabilities extend far beyond simple task completion. The robot can read books aloud to people who can no longer read for themselves, send emails, and make video calls to keep isolated individuals connected with their families and maintain conversations that feel genuinely engaging rather than scripted. What makes Nadine genuinely revolutionary is its emotional adaptation system. The robot converses fluently in six different languages, remembers individual faces, and recalls previous interactions with specific people, and responds to conversations with contextually appropriate emotional reactions. Nadine maintains eye contact during conversations just like a human would, understands basic gestures and body language, and reacts to what it observes with facial expressions and upper body movements. Most remarkably, Nadine's mood shifts based on how people treat it kindness and patience, elicit warm, engaged responses, while frustration or dismissiveness cause the robot to become more reserved and cautious. This isn't programmed behavioral scripting, it's genuine adaptive learning that mimics how human emotional responses develop through social interaction. Russia's unexpected entry, Arty, the performing humanoid. While Japan dominates the humanoid space, Russia has contributed something genuinely unique to the field robots, designed specifically for theatrical performance and emotional expression. Arty, developed by Show Expo and unveiled at the International Exhibition Forum, Russia, showcases what happens when robotics engineering meets performing arts. 
This humanoid features anatomically accurate facial mechanics with a remarkable range of micro-expressions, elastic silicone skin that moves naturally during speech and emotion, and specialized programming focused entirely on artistic expression. Artie wasn't built to assemble products or navigate warehouses, it was built to perform poetry, sing songs, express theatrical emotions, and connect with audiences on an emotional level. At the International Exhibition Forum, Artie performed a duet with renowned Russian singer Nadezhda Babkina, singing My Homeland together on stage before a live audience. The performance transcended mere technical demonstration. Artie expressed the song's emotional content through synchronized facial expressions, body language, and gestures that felt genuinely connected to the music. Babkina praised the robot's vocal capabilities, while thoughtfully cautioning against over-reliance on neural networks in creative fields. But here's what makes Artie genuinely significant beyond its artistic capabilities. It's the world's first mass-produced humanoid robot with this level of expressive sophistication. The creators announced that Artie is available for custom manufacturing in any quantity, suggesting they've solved the production scalability challenges that keep most expressive humanoids as expensive one-off prototypes. Crossing the Uncanny Valley, Geminoid F. For years, robotics has struggled with the uncanny valley, that uncomfortable psychological response when something looks almost human but not quite right, triggering instinctive revulsion rather than connection. But Japan's latest humanoids are proving that valley might be far narrower than we believed. Geminoid F, created by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro, was specifically designed to trigger empathy and emotional connection rather than discomfort. The robot was modeled after a young Japanese woman, complete with realistic silicone skin, natural human hair, and clothing that makes it indistinguishable from a real person when viewed from across a room. Geminoid F features 12 facial pneumatic actuators, allowing for subtle, nuanced expressions, and can operate both through remote teleoperation and autonomous AI control. What's genuinely fascinating is that Geminoid F has already successfully crossed into mainstream entertainment. The robot has performed in theatrical productions and appeared in films, including the 2022 movie Digital Human. Audiences watching Geminoid F perform report a remarkable psychological phenomenon. After just a few minutes of observation, they stop consciously perceiving it as a robot and begin responding to it as an actor with slightly unusual mannerisms. That perceptual shift where the brain stops categorizing the humanoid as object and starts treating it as entity represents exactly what designers have been striving for. The goal was never to create perfect human replicas that fool observers completely. The goal was to create machines expressive enough that humans naturally respond to them as social beings rather than mechanical tools. Kodamoroid, designed for public interaction. Research-driven design represents another Japanese advantage in humanoid development. Consider Kodomoroid, developed by Professor Ishiguro, specifically for deployment at the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation in Tokyo. This robot resembles a young girl and performs the straightforward task of announcing news and weather forecasts in multiple languages. But the design optimization wasn't focused on efficiency or capability. It was optimized for psychological relatability and emotional comfort. Kodomoroid produces synchronized lip movements perfectly matched with speech, blinks naturally at human-appropriate intervals, and expresses emotions through gentle facial movements that feel non-threatening and approachable. The robot's purpose isn't to replace human announcers or demonstrate technical superiority. It exists to explore fundamental questions about how people emotionally respond to humanoid communication in public spaces. That research-first approach, prioritizing human emotional response and psychological comfort over pure functional efficiency, represents Japan's fundamental strategic advantage in the global humanoid race. While Western companies optimize for task completion and Chinese manufacturers focus on production scalability, Japanese robotics continues asking the question that will ultimately determine mass adoption. How do we make people want to interact with these machines? Sophia's transformation. From publicity stunt to genuine AI, when Sophia from Hansen Robotics became the first robot granted citizenship by Saudi Arabia back in 2017, many dismissed it as an elaborate publicity stunt. The conversations felt scripted, the responses seemed pre-programmed, and the entire exercise appeared more about headlines than genuine technological advancement. 
But fast forward to 2026, and Sophia has undergone transformative upgrades that have converted it from celebrity novelty into genuinely capable conversational agent. The newest Sophia models feature dramatically improved skin-like materials that respond naturally to different lighting conditions, advanced eye-tracking systems that maintain genuine feeling eye contact throughout extended conversations, and micro-actuated facial muscles capable of producing incredibly nuanced expressions that communicate subtle emotional states. But the hardware improvements pale compared to the software revolution. Sophia's AI backend has been completely rebuilt from the ground up to eliminate the repetitive, looping conversation patterns that plagued earlier versions. Now equipped with state-of-the-art language models and sophisticated contextual memory systems, Sophia can maintain long, natural conversations without falling back on scripted responses or obviously pre-programmed dialogue trees. It remembers previous interactions across multiple sessions, references earlier parts of ongoing conversations naturally, and adapts its communication style based on who it's talking to and what they seem to need. That conversational fluidity makes Sophia feel dramatically more alive than previous iterations. The robot has successfully deployed in interviews, talk shows, educational settings, and even co-hosted events where it needed to improvise responses in real time to unexpected situations. Amika the face that breaks the internet. If there's one humanoid robot that perfectly captures where this technology is heading, it's Ameka from Engineered Arts. This machine has evolved from viral internet curiosity into something that generates genuine emotional reactions from people encountering it for the first time. Ameka in 2026 represents the clearest current example of what happens when engineering precision meets artistic sensibility in humanoid design. This isn't a typical industrial robot with exposed servos, visible wiring, and rigid mechanical movements. Amika's facial expressions are so eerily realistic that people instinctively treat it like a conscious being rather than an inanimate machine. The latest Ameka version can detect subtle vocal cues in human speech tone, pace, emotional inflection, and adjust its own responses accordingly in real time. If you sound upset or stressed, Ameka reacts with visible concern, narrowing its eyes slightly, tilting its head in a gesture of empathy, and softening its vocal tone. If you're excited or enthusiastic, it mirrors that energy with wider expressions, more animated gestures, and increased responsiveness. What makes Ameka genuinely groundbreaking isn't just the silicone skin stretched over its mechanical skull, it's the integration of dozens of micromotors controlling individual facial muscles with unprecedented precision. Most humanoid robots can manage five or six basic expressions like happiness, sadness, or surprise. Ameka has refined this capability to over 30 distinct micro-expressions, allowing it to convey nuanced emotional states like mild skepticism, genuine curiosity, subtle amusement, or gentle concern. People describe interacting with Ameka as profoundly disorienting. Your logical brain knows you're communicating with a machine, but your social instincts insist there's someone genuinely present behind those eyes. That cognitive dissonance is precisely what makes Ameka so revolutionary. It has successfully crossed the uncanny valley threshold where instead of triggering discomfort or revulsion, the humanoid starts feeling almost natural almost acceptable, almost like just another person you're having a conversation with. The Convergence Ahead By 2026, the humanoid robotics landscape has fragmented into distinctly different philosophical camps, each pursuing radically different visions of human-robot interaction and integration. Western companies like Boston Dynamics and Figure prioritize utility and functionality, building robots that can perform valuable work in warehouses, construction sites, and factories Handling repetitive or physically dangerous tasks humans would prefer to avoid. Chinese companies emphasize manufacturing efficiency and production scalability, creating robots designed for mass deployment in industrial settings where cost-effectiveness matters more than emotional connection. But Japan has deliberately carved out something fundamentally different. Humanoid robots designed specifically for emotional connection, social interaction, and genuine human companionship. The question moving forward isn't which technical approach is objectively superior, it's which philosophical approach will ultimately define how billions of ordinary people experience robotics in their daily lives. As these technologies continue maturing and converging, we're rapidly approaching a threshold moment in human history. 
within the next few years, it may become genuinely difficult to determine at a glance whether the entity across from you is biological flesh and blood or synthetic carbon fiber and silicon. That's not speculative science fiction. It's the logical trajectory of technologies already demonstrating human-level facial expressiveness, natural conversational ability, and adaptive emotional responsiveness. Japan's humanoid robots aren't shocking the world merely because of their technical sophistication or engineering excellence. They're shocking the world because they're forcing humanity to reconsider fundamental philosophical questions about consciousness, connection, identity, and what it ultimately means to be human in an age where the boundaries between person and machine are dissolving before our eyes.